Hey everyone, appreciate you tuning into this episode of The Wolves Den. Uh, on this episode, I wanna go over standard operating procedures, or SOPs for short. Um, so I guess we'll just dive right into that. Uh, so what standard operating procedures are, to give you a little bit of background on, if you haven't heard of them before, they're uh, procedures in a way that certain tasks in your business are uh, taken care of on a daily, weekly, monthly, yearly, quarterly, uh, biannual basis. So it's uh, putting on paper um, the protocols, the step-by-step -step processes, the, the checklists uh, of how to do certain tasks in the business. What, how I sort of like to look at it is uh, like a recipe. So uh, when you, no matter if you're baking, if you're cooking, uh, there's a step-by-step -step process when you're uh, baking or cooking something that you have to follow to get the same end result every single time. So it lists the ingredients, um, it lists the, the directions, how the temperature, how long you have to do something, what to mix with what, what not to do as well, um, and what the desired outcome is. And the same thing applies to your business in terms of the marketing, in terms of invoicing, in terms of onboarding, pretty much anything and everything that you can think of, uh, you could just look at it as a recipe. And um, when you are baking or cooking something, you don't have to have that person that um, came up with that recipe to be sitting by you showing you how to do it they created something a procedure that anyone and everyone can follow in the comfort of their home so in order to uh, grow a business in order to sort of separate yourself yourself as in the business owner or the general manager or um, whoever is the the go-to person for the organization if you want to sort of not have all the arrows pointing to yourself and put other people um in or have other people be accountable for certain things and have other people know what the expectations are of the business incorporating standard operating procedures are very very important to, to help grow a business and the reason that i wanted to bring this up in this podcast episode is because myself being the owner of golden wolf um, i want to be able to grow the business and not have all the arrows and all the problems be targeted towards me. Um, obviously, I understand that's just what I have to do in my role right now, but I, I want to be able to, as time goes on, as we get bigger and bigger, I don't want myself to take on all the responsibility because then at the end of the day, it's just going to be a job for myself. It's not going to be a business. So being able to clearly define the expectations and create clarity for all staff members uh, whether it be someone out in the fields, mechanics, office staff, it's going to allow everyone to, to follow a step-by-step -step procedure um, that's repeatable every single time. So there's going to be no questioning on how to do things, what to do things. Obviously, it's going to take a while to get used to it, but it's at least something that they can reference back to. Um, and also, it's going to be great for, for training purposes as well. Uh, for example, we just onboarded a new office assistant uh, yesterday, actually, and um, I, over the past couple of months, I've been working on some of these things. It's, it takes a long time to, to get everything out of your head and put it on paper, and um, I knew that she was going to be starting, so I wanted to fi finalize and wrap up some of those SOPs for office staff and administrative work, invoicing, scheduling, and uh, when she was onboarding, our operations manager sort of walked her through the process of things the first time about a phone script, um, what to ask, what not to ask, how to say things, what information to gather. And it's something that she could refer back to at any point at any time. And she doesn't have to um, go back to our operations manager or go back to myself saying, what was that again? It's something that it's uh, a foolproof, foolproof process that just creates clarity for her saying this is what we expect as an organization being in this position, doing this certain task. So 
being we're we're all trying to manage expectations, and that's really what uh, we do t- with clients. That's what we do with uh, employees and other staff members, and that's what managers do. They just manage expectations, and if you can clearly define those expectations. Uh, having procedures, then it would just make everyone's life a little bit easier because it's something that we could re- reference to and sort of take out the middleman or the blame game saying, oh, I didn't know or how is this done again and creating frustration and a waste of time. So another good thing about having SOP, standard operating procedures, is I, I was just sharing with um, we threw that example that we just hired that office assistant and um, just say, God forbid, I'm not saying I want this to happen at all, but uh, this office assistant decides to leave a couple months down the road or she ends up not being a good fit for us. So we would be able to um, take the exact same process and apply it to a new person in that position. Uh, a lot of things in business, you, you don't. If someone leaves in a business, obviously it's gonna uh, put a little, um, put a put a wrench into things and sort of mix some things up. If they're uh, depending on their role in the business, pretty much every role in a small business is very important. But uh, if you could take, or if someone were to leave, and you were to have this the systems and procedures that you expect for someone in that position to um, do on a daily, weekly, monthly basis, you could replace that individual and have a, another qualified individual come into that position and sort of pick up where they left off and not have to train them for months and months and months um, and sort of backtracking and wasting all that time. So having the systems and procedures in place would allow uh, a business to onboard much quicker and just allow the same tasks to be followed time in and time out. Um, by doing so, just creating an organizational, organizational structure that holds people accountable, um, just putting measurables in place. So... Uh, but in terms of accountability, what I mean by that is, um, I, I know I'm using this uh, new hire on uh, because it's something that we just experienced yesterday. Uh, we, our operations manager, is holding her accountable for um, using that phone script and not really going off too much. Obviously, there's ex- er, uh, exceptions when it comes to certain calls or certain leads or certain. Uh, people calling in, but uh, this is what we're going to hold her accountable to. And it's something that would allow us to direct uh, direct us to that procedure. And maybe um, it's not the best procedure. And that, that could be totally, if something's going wrong with that employee or something with that position or something with the workflow, then instead of looking at the person, maybe we could look at the procedure, what they're following. So it sort of takes a little bit of that finger pointing away, all those arrows pointing at people. And obviously people are important. It could definitely be a people problem, but um, procedures could always be changing. Obviously, you don't want to change it too much. And then everyone second guess themselves about what they were doing or how they were doing things. But uh, procedures can change over time to better adapt to do things better. Um, Us, in our role as a small business in the green industry, we we value a lot of feedback from our staff members because they they could have better ideas, better ways about doing things. We're always open to change. So maybe if on that procedure for the phone script that we have... um, the, the young lady that started with us yesterday, she thinks uh, it could be done a better way, then of course we want to be able to be open to it and it may work, it may not work. So just being able to open, being open to other staff members, uh, 
ideas, other staff members, ways about doing things. It could, it could work and it could not work, but just being open-minded would it help you grow a business quicker and allow those procedures to be better for yourself, for themselves. Um, because if you're just solely focused about what you care about and only focused about the person making the procedures, then it's, it's not really a business. Then it's just uh, like a dictator telling people what to do. You always want to be open to ideas and opinions of other people. Um, another thing that's very important about having procedures is it's allowing yourself as a business owner to be duplicated in some areas. So I know myself um, being able to delegate certain tasks to other people is very important to having the growth of the business. And I, I know I could be speaking to some people that are okay with um, being out in the field as an owner-operator or some people that don't want to delegate or um, some people that this may not apply to, but I, if I could be um, speaking to a handful of people um, or a certain percentage of people that this may apply to. Um, so I just want to make sure we're, we're clear on that, that this is not for every single business model. It really depends on what your personal and professional goals are. But myself directly, uh, being able to duplicate myself, obviously I got to take that with a grain of salt because having too many marketers is never, never a good thing, but being able to um, delegate certain tasks to certain individuals to uh, put them at a position of what they do best, it would allow them to follow these procedures in order for them to know the expectations about um, what the company expects, as well as instead of just having myself do anything and everything in terms of the back end of the business or also the, the field work, it allows us to put other people in certain positions to succeed and do what they do best. And I know as a, an owner of the business that it's all getting taken care of up to those procedures and measurables that we're putting in place. Um, being able to delegate is a huge thing when it comes to growing a business because you can never do it all by yourself. Um, that's used to, to be honest with you, I used to think um, I could only do it myself because it's only my way and I only feel comfortable with myself doing it, but that's just part of growing as a person and growing in a business. And to separate yourself from that thinking is a very important step in the growth of a business because you would never be able to accomplish anything great in life by only doing it yourself. There's at least has to be someone or several people next to you or beside you or just being able to help you through the process because there's so many great people out there and they're they're willing to help you they want to help you they want to do what they do best and be um, empowered to sort of take the reins and just have a little bit of freedom and you never want to micromanage people um, and that's why and that, that could be another uh, topic of this podcast is not being able, not micromanaging people is when you put procedures in place, you're letting the procedure manage the person or manage the expectations and the outcome and the tasks of that person. So you don't have to be standing over them making sure, did you do this? Did you do this? Did you do this? Um, so that helps as well because no one ever wants to be micromanaged. Um, and going back to that, duplicating yourself to delegate certain tasks, even tasks that you don't like, you may be not the best at. Um, it gets your ideas out of your head and puts it on paper. Uh, there's a book that I read called The E-Myth. I'm pretty sure the author was Michael E. Gerber, but excuse me if I'm wrong. And he was saying um, the book was about how do you grow a a systemized and uh, or systematized business to a level where you don't have to be in the thick of it every single day because that that is a business it, a, a job is something that you have to show up to and if you don't show up one day then uh, it collapses in on each other or in on itself so being able to uh, the books the, the premise of the book is being able to document things and get it out of your head and put it on paper and have manuals and 
a, a document, a process for every step in your business, for every task in your business, so that it could be duplicated by anyone at any time, it, anywhere. Um, and it also helps with training a lot. So another thing that that book was saying is um, McDonald's. They use that as an example. So McDonald's was the the pinnacle of how to systematize and put processes in business that would allow people to grow and people or, or allow a business to grow. So um, the gentleman, I forget his name. Um, off the top of my head, who founded McDonald's, but he, with with all the thousands of restaurants that he has across the world, more or less, he doesn't have to be at every single one of those um, locations flipping every single burger is because he put certain processes in place that anyone could duplicate his ideas and thoughts and apply it anywhere in the world. And you could get the exact same outcome in um, China, a, a McDonald's in China, China versus a McDonald's in America because they're following the exact same procedure, uh, which reduces the risk of uh, the individuals who would be performing those tasks. So it's um, taking the guessing work out of it and a lot of uh, taking out, it would make it a more efficient process and help you save some, some money because you're not just guessing. It's something that you have to follow that has been proven to work and that will work if you follow the process. So improving efficiency is also another huge thing as well because instead of everyone doing it, 10 people doing it 10 different ways, you have 10 people doing it one way that would allow for that um, process to be a very efficient way about doing it um, to limit the amount of risk and exposure for questioning or uh, wasted time or who knows what. Um, but the real point of this podcast is if you are in a time where you want to be able to grow your business and sort of, or uh, to delegate tasks in order to grow the business to a certain level where not all the fingers are pointed at you and not all the arrows are pointed at you and not all the responsibilities are pointed at you. And if someone leaves, the business falls apart and you're trying, you personally are training every single person um, and if they were to leave, all that time is wasted. There's nothing that you could hand them, no manuals, no um, order of operations, no procedures that they could follow to allow them to reference back to. It, it's this, this podcast is for you because uh, it's been important in my growth as a business owner to have, uh, obviously I'm not perfect by any means, but being able to start and acknowledge the fact that procedures are a very important part in growing a business. Um, and it's it's always going to be a, a work in progress. It's, it's never going to be 100% day one. And they could always change over time, always be open to ideas, and just being able to use the, the people around you that are gifted in other ways that you may not be gifted in is very important to the growth of a business and the growth of others as well. Empowering other people to do what they do best and not micromanaging at all. But uh, long story short, putting these pr some procedures in place, I mean, it, it could start with one. And then it, you don't wanna look at it about every single thing and anything that you do in your business, you need to make a procedure for because then you'll get overwhelmed. Obviously that could happen over time, but just starting with one or making a list of things that you think are the most important that you can delegate initially that's where you want to be able to start it and just being able to take little bites off and not look at it on a macro view look at it on a micro view would help 
tremendously because it, it could be a little intimidating and very time consuming. Um, but just being able to recognize that it's going to take time, that it's going to be worth it. And with every single new procedure that you put in place, it's going to help you get one step closer to that goal of being able to delegate or being able to take one arrow away from pointing at you. It's what it's all about. Um, so uh, one other thing that I want to say is uh, when you're developing a procedure, I should have said this way back earlier, so I, I apologize for putting it at the end, but at least I'm putting it in. Uh, when you are developing certain procedures, make sure they're not 30 pages long. Make sure they're not um, one sentence long. Usually when, going back to that, uh, when I was referencing a recipe, usually it's about a page, plus or minus a little bit. But being able to keep it in a short contain, take all the, the fluff out and just put the, the meat of it on paper, um, that's the, very important to acknowledge as well. Because if you put too much, it'll be too overwhelming and there's going to be too many steps that people are going to get overwhelmed. Once they start to read a 10-page process, obviously there could be ex there exceptions to that depending on your type of business. But, um, and same thing on the other side, you don't want to leave people questioning if it's just one or two sentences that no one knows what to follow then, or no one knows the certain procedure. But just being able to keep it approximately one page, detailed to the point, and take all the fluff out and just put all the meat in there, that's very important to acknowledge as well. But um, to wrap up the podcast, obviously I want to, or I'm curious what other people have done in their businesses to help grow them to a point of being able to mass delegate or being able to a point to um, put certain procedures in place where they are not the uh, the center point of all the issues that go on or all the day-to-day -day tasks. So I'm curious what you guys have done prior to help your business out as well as um, if you haven't done so I'm just curious as well then what may be holding you back obviously uh, taking massive action would help alleviate a lot of the things that people are going through day to day but obviously I want to hear both sides of the spectrum um, but again thank you very much for taking some time to listen to this podcast hopefully you got some value out of it and obviously let me know if you have any questions but I'll see you guys next time. Thank you.